Perth is one of the most isolated cities in the world, and because of this, Perth, which is the gateway to beautiful Western Australia, is usually missed from most people's itineraries as it's just too far away from even the rest of Australia. But today, we're going to show you why you can't miss it. Also, Perth and Western Australia are the only place in the world where you can find a certain adorable animal known as the happiest animal in the world. If you think you know what we're talking about, leave us a comment below or keep watching and we'll show you what it is later in this video. So let's dive in. To kick off the Perth trip, I headed to Elizabeth Quay, the main harbour near the city centre. Here, you're walking distance from an array of shops and restaurants. Perth is one of the sunniest capital cities in the world, averaging almost nine hours of sunshine a day. I would recommend stopping by Henry's Upstairs Bar, a cool little spot with cocktails with views of the quay. I went during the day, but the place looks very nice during the evening too, or a nice place to come and watch the sunset over the city and the river. Despite Perth having a population of almost 2 million people, the city is sprawling and therefore the city center itself can feel pretty small. It's worth having a walk around, although a lot of Perth's charm is in its relative calmness and nice public areas, rather than its major sites and attractions. Of course, you can find major shopping centers, bars and restaurants, and a train station here in the city as well. The next day, I was on my way to the ferry port near the quay. The morning was gorgeous and sunny, and I was walking from my hotel towards the quay. You can see from the shot that Perth is surrounded by water. While you're walking through the city, you'll notice a major river that runs through the heart of the city. It's called the Swan River, which connects the hills to the Indian Ocean. Perth have put walking and running trails along much of the river, which makes it a lovely place for a stroll and to take in the sights of the city. Perth is a launch pad to explore much of the nature that surrounds it, from national parks like the Pinnacles, the desert to the east, the giant Kari forest and wine country to the south, and of course, those white sand turquoise water beaches both north and south on the Indian Ocean. Speaking of which, it was then time to get the ferry to famous Rottnest Island. The island is about 45 minutes away from Perth Quayside, but can also be reached by ferry from other locations, including Fremantle. There are set times to get the ferry and return options, so make sure you do check the local ferry timetable and look to book your tickets at least a day before just to be on the safe side. It's worth noting that the ferry journey itself is quite informative about Perth and the different areas surrounding it. When you arrive at Rottnest, which is also known as Wajamup or Rotto as well to the locals, you can walk around or even get a bus to key spots. Rottnest itself is only about 19 square kilometers, making it an easy place to explore. You can explore some of the main areas on just a day trip from Perth, or you can choose to stay overnight. There are a variety of options for accommodation, including camping, hostels, or a hotel. You can see a lot of the island in just a day trip, but to take your time and really explore, one night here would be a good option. The most popular way to see the island though, and the best way in my opinion, is to hire a bike. It's easy to find bike hires, which are located right as you disembark the ferry. I would recommend booking bike hire in advance if possible though, especially in high season, just to avoid any disappointment. There are no cars on the island, so it's quite safe to ride around and it's a great way to find some of the best spots hidden around the island. Rottnest is a nature reserve and as such has some of the best beaches in the world. White sands, crystal clear water, minimal waves across most of the island's sheltered bays, pretty walkways, and miles of car-free trails. You can swim or snorkel at most spots around Rottnest, Check out the Basin, Little Salmon Bay, and Little Parakeet Bay for swimming. Thompson Bay also has a roped off swimming area safer for families. You can also go hiking on the west end of the island. Weather-wise, much like Perth, the weather here is mainly sunny and temperate all year round, meaning you can visit at virtually any time, with the winter having a higher chance of cool, rainy weather, and the summer possibly getting a bit hot, so just plan accordingly. Do note that there is little shade across much of the island, so pack your sun protection as well. And now it's time to come back to the world's happiest animal, the quokka. No trip to Rottnest could truly be complete without spending some time visiting the famous quokkas. Quokkas are a marsupial, related to kangaroos and wallabies, and they are, to put it bluntly, super cute. These friendly little creatures can only be found in Western Australia, with the main communities being found on Little Rottnest Island. You can find them all around the island, but the main population stays around the food court, so once you've cycled all around the island, you can come spend some time with them. They are super approachable, and you may even want to get a selfie with one. Just make sure not to touch them, they're still wild animals, and you can get fined for doing so. When you are ready to leave and hop back on the ferry, you can either get a ferry back to Perth, or to the famous seaside town of Fremantle. 
Fremantle is a historic town on the south side of Perth and a short ferry ride from Rottnest Island. Fremantle, also known as Frio, was one of the early settlements by the British in the 1800s and, as such, houses the oldest building in Western Australia that's called the Roundhouse. From here, you can also walk down to the beach. As you can tell, there was this misty, smoky haze this day. Trust me, it was the same day from Rottnest. But it wasn't really a beach day anymore as it got a bit windy. So I walked towards the pier where there are a number of restaurants and if you fancy a beer, check out this little creature's brewery, which is a great spot down by the pier. I got the train back to Perth city center, which was easy, modern, quick, and affordable. So if you have more time and need to get to other areas around Perth, the train is definitely one to check out. On the way back to Perth, I decided to stop at the Kings Park, which is also where the botanical gardens are. This park is huge, and as it was already a long day, I really wanted to sit somewhere and watch the sun go down, so I went to the edge of the park to check out some of the views over the city. A few locals also had the same idea. I really recommend this park to check it out due to these amazing views. And that wraps up only 48 hours in Perth. I wish I had more time here, but the next day I was going to start a trip up the west coast of Australia, which we will feature in our next video. So please drop us a like and ensure you subscribe not to miss out on those videos and the rest of our Australia trip. Thanks for watching.